are happening and people are, are running away to escape the stun, the stun grenades. Uh, uh, certainly a flare-up in violence and this comes as people have broken the fast of Ramadan, people have finished praying and people are refusing to disperse from the area. There's a terrible stench in the air. It's from this machine over here. So we're just going to move out of the way because we don't want to get caught from that kind of water that is being sprayed over there. And you can see the water going off in the distance. Now, earlier at around six o'clock local time, for the first time in a long time, the siren sounded here in Jerusalem. There were 45 rockets that were fired from Gaza. And Israel responded almost immediately with airstrikes that it says the Air Force struck three Hamas sites. Now, we are hearing that quite a number of Palestinians were killed, including children. At the same time, the Israeli Defense Minister, Benny Gantz, has called for a state of emergency within a 50-mile radius of the Gaza Strip. Now, this comes as the international community responds to Israel. It is hugely critical. Amnesty International says it has people on the ground and to quote it, the Israelis have been using excessive force. At the same time, UNICEF says dozens of children have been injured and the European Union has also come on board and pointed fingers at the Israelis. We are deeply concerned over the recent clashes and violence. It's clear that all sides must uh, uphold and fully respect the status quo of the holy sites. The situation with regard to the evictions of Palestinian families, I want to repeat what we have already been saying. Such actions are illegal under international humanitarian law and only serve to fuel tensions on the ground. Now, earlier on Monday, there was the annual planned Jerusalem Day March. There was discussion amongst the Israeli security forces as to whether or not it should be cancelled, but the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, said no, uh, as did right-wing elements, said that they would not give in. They would not give in to Palestinian provocations. So the march went ahead. When the sirens sounded, the march disbanded, but people here came out onto the streets. Despite these scenes, we have the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, saying that his security forces will continue to act this way and he will not give in or let them give in to what he calls rogue elements and extremist elements here in Jerusalem. Now, there are signs that the violence, which is the worst in the last four years, is escalating and spreading to other areas. As you can see behind me, the Israeli police are firing stun grenades at protesters who have been throwing bottles and glass at them. At the same time, the Israeli army has brought in reinforcements to the West Bank and just yesterday we saw a protest in the northern Israeli town of Haifa. It certainly is spreading beyond Jerusalem. Tonight is the fourth consecutive night that we've witnessed these kinds of tense scenes. <laughs> Some speculation that the violence could be reduced in the next two days as Ramadan comes to an end, but it's hard to tell what will happen. If we just turn over here, you can see young running away as the stun grenades are being fired. The Israeli army and police are screaming and yelling, so they they're shouting at each other to come in this direction. They certainly want to clear the area of the the protesters, the youngsters that have been here as we notice the fourth consecutive night of violence here in Jerusalem. Paul Islia, RT, Jerusalem. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, and verse 20. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom and his purposes, that he have purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Achak, Wadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Achak, Wadash, Barak, Dumb.
to you Zaquanium, Waakim, Waquafium, you know, the elders, the brothers, the sisters, the hopeful elect, out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith in your Hawawai, your Hawashai, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Peshai, Banya Allah, and this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit and Pav Yahweh Bashim Yahushai on the least of the flock being these Amalekites, right? Is um, Israelis or those claiming to be the um the Jews, right? The Amalekites, the least of the flock, shall draw them out, draw who out? The rest of Edom, you know, into what? Into war, you know, because war is coming, war is prophesied, and the least of the flock, the Amalekites, are gonna draw them out, cause we know there's conflict going on over there. Um, I'm gonna read this article through the Spirit, but um, you know the conflict going on over there between Palestine and Israel, right? We know neighboring um countries and stuff like that are gonna start joining in. You know, neighboring neighboring allies, you know, and we know that um, al who's allies with Israel? America, you know what I'm saying? America's allies with Israel, and we know that um, Iran may you know get involved with this conflict, you know, and we know who's um, um allies with Iran, Russia, you see. So that's the least of the flock drawing them out, drawing the rest of the nation to eat them, you know, out into that war, the third war, the third world's war, you know, it's gonna be the war to end all wars, man, you see. So the least of the flock is drawing them out. Let's read that again. Right, Jeremiah, I got it pulled up right here as a matter of fact. So let me just zoom a little out of this. I got it in Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, saying the same thing. Right, but as a matter of fact, let me see something. I'll just read it. Jeremiah 50 and 45. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord they have taken against Babylon. You know, it's Babylon. It's not talking about ancient Babylon. It's talking about America, right? And its purposes. That he had purpose against the land of the Chaldeans. You see? Surely the least of the flock. And who's that least of the flock? The least of the flock is the Amalekites. Shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of taking, at the, at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. And the cry is heard among the nations. You know, that mom description in Isaiah the 24th chapter. How the earth is moved, um... Exceedingly, like is, is moved um, to and fro. The earth shall roll to and fro like a junker. You know, the missile is going to get shot off, man. And who's going to be the one that draw them out? That um draw the conflict to cause this? The Amalekites. You know, they're the ones that's going to draw them out. Let's read some of this article. So let me zoom in again a little bit. All right, so it says Israel to ramp up deadly airstrikes on Gaza as rockets rain down in depths mount on both sides. Right, and this came out uh, May 11, 2021, the year of hastening unto the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. You know, and we know he's gonna come in the midst of World War III. You know, pursuant to 2nd Ertis 13th chapter, you know, counts other scriptures as well. That's the first one that comes to mind. All right, so let's read some of these article. It says Israel's armed forces and Palestinian militants exchanged rocket fire on Tuesday as days of fighting centered around. One of the holiest sites in the world for Muslims, Jews, and Christians snowballed into another deadly flare-up in a decades-long conflict. The bloodshed was likely to get worse. And these are all heathens, man. You know, these are all heathens and around there. You have some jakes that scattered amongst them, of course, right? But these these are heathens, man. You see, so they don't belong in that land anyway, right? So it said the bloodshed was likely to get worse as both sides indicated that they would escalate their attacks, right? And all of this in the book of Matthew as well. Matthew, or is it Luke? I believe it's Luke 21. There's a scripture on that, man. You know, how the Gentiles... Matter of fact, let me get this scripture right fast, man. I just mentioned a point. How these are all, you know, heathens in our, in our land, man. Right, we're going to get Luke 21. And I believe it's down, like, at verse. Let me see. Right here, Luke 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive unto all nations, the Israelites, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time times of Gentiles be fulfilled. And their time is almost fulfilled, man. Esau know he got a short time. You know, that's why he's about to come down in great wrath, man. You know, so our land, Drew, the land Jerusalem was trodden down the Gentiles, and of course, our people as well, man. We've been trodden down by these Gentiles, these other nations, you know. But our land as well, our land, because, you know, Jerusalem is a people for us a place. But, you know, ultimately, again, our land was trodden down to the Gentiles, man. 
until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled and they, and they time is up. You know, they had their time, man. You know, now the Lord is raising up who the tabernacle of David, the prophets that's out there prophesying, teaching his word. You know what I'm saying? He's getting ready to send back his beloved son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, to establish order on this earth. You know, righteousness on this earth. You see, he deliver he gonna deliver the elect, destroy the wicked, and subdue the nations. You know, so you all you heat the nations are gonna be in subjection to the nation Israel very soon. You know, then later on right here it says the return of a Mashiach. Right? Um matter of fact, let me see something. <clears throat> right? So these are all signs of the second coming. Let me read this right fast. Uh where's it at? Verse 29, and he spake to them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye, ye see and know of yourselves that summer is, is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye shall see these things come to pass, what things? Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. You see, all these signs that Yahweh Shah gave us, you know, when you see these things come to pass, ye know that the kingdom of, of Yahweh is nigh at hand, right? So the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. You know, so these things must come to pass. Let me, let me just read that precept since I quoted it. Uh, it's right here. Luke 21 and 9. Right? So he did some of the signs Yahweh Shah was telling the, 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 um, the disciples. So Luke 21 and 9. But when ye shall hear wars and commotions, and that's what we see right now. Like you see in the first video clip that played in the intro, that's wars and commotions. You know, they, they, they exchanging rocket fire, you know, shooting rockets at each other, people dying. I believe the death toll was at like 24, but now it's increasing. I believe another nine just died. If I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna look, look into it again, right? But we know bodies over there dropping over there in the Middle East, man, right? So it says, "But when ye shall hear, when ye shall hear of wars or commotions, be not terrified." So just don't terrify the whole four elect. We want these things to come to pass, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, "Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom." And that's what's going on. You're going to have race wars and riots. You're going to have kingdom against kingdom. Ultimately, that's World War III. You see? And great earthquake, great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall it be from heaven. Right? So that's everything that's going on right now. Now, back to the article. Got right, a couple more. I'm going to close out. None, you know, none, none too long. Straight to the point. Let's lock in. Right? <clears throat> so if we, let's read on down to some more of this article. Where we at with it? That's that's not it. Let me refresh this slocky out your all one second. All right. Let me exit out of that. All right, it says the health ministry in the Gaza Strip, a tiny um parcel of land run by the um, Hamas group, but with borders strictly controlled by Israel, said on Tuesday that at least 26 people have been killed by Israeli airstrikes in the territory, including nine children. Right, so that's the information I was quoting earlier, right? Nine children, not just nine people, it was nine children, right? In any event, so it's, this right here shows what? A rocket is fired from Gaza City, controlled by the Palestinian Hamas movement toward Israel on May 11, 2021, right? So this is the Palestinians shooting rockets at Israel, man. Koholaim la yaw bashim now shot. Right, Israel's military said it was targeting Hamas militant leaders in retaliation for a steady volley of rockets fired from Gaza at Israel. More than 400, they shot almost on um, more than 400 rockets, right, and climbing fast. Right, uh, let's see. A salvo of rockets hit, hit homes in Israeli cities as Ashkelon and Ashdod on Tuesday, but many of the um. Projectiles launched either fell short and landed in Gaza or were in intercepted by Israel's advanced Iron Dome missile defense system. Right, so it's, it's man, it's going down over there, man. You know, it is going down over there, man. And Lord willing, Iran get involved somehow, you know, because they got some nuclear arsenal, man. It's not going to be these little rockets right that y'all see going on right now. It's going to be nuclear, man. Wipe out a whole country, man. You see. So it's an Israeli emergency response official said two women were killed in the barrage on Tuesday afternoon and at least one more was left in critical condition. Earlier authorities said it um, said at least 10 people had been treated for uns unsuspected, unspecified Salaki injuries in Ashkelon and Ashdod. Right. So it says an Israeli fighter fighter walks next to cars hit by a missile fired from Gaza Strip 
in the southern Israeli town of Ashkelon, May 11th, 2021, year of hastening. All right, so this is beautiful, man. All right, all right I'm about to say, I thought it was acting up again. All right, so Hamas military wing, the Al Qassam Brigades, uh, I believe I pronounced that right, if not, in any event, claimed to have launched 137 rockets at the two southern Israeli cities within just five minutes on Tuesday. So within five minutes, they launched, what, 137 rockets, right? So this this is all Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai working in the minds of these other nations to stir up and get ready for World War III. This, that's what's going on. You see, I'm going to get that precept um, and draw the third chapter, right? As a matter of fact, let's get it now. Because I bought it in an article, man. So I'm going I'm to link this article in the description box below. Lord willing, I don't forget. But we see the least of the flock is getting ready to draw them out, man. You know, because we know Israel is, is allies with America, Babylon the Great. And we know, um, according to the prophecy, some, something going to go down between the beast, which is near the EU, which is going to shoot America with fire, you know, or shoot America with the missiles, you see, according to the prophecy. So we know prophecy is going to get fulfilled regardless, man, because as it is written in Isaiah 55 and verse 10 on down, how the word of the Lord did not return to him void, you see? But let's read this, all three in verse nine, proclaim me this among the Gentiles, these other nations, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. A precept that's popped into my mind is this, to prove that all of this is the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, that war three, you know, pops off. Proverbs 21 and verse one, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whether so ever he will. So all of this is the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Because the king's heart, their mind is in the hand of him, of the heavenly father Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai. You see? So let's go back to this. So the heavenly father is putting his spirit upon these Gentiles, other nations, to prepare for war. What war? World War Three, Right? Draw 3 verse 9. Proclaim this among the... Which, like, which proves that we're, we're, we're gearing closer and closer to the second coming of our Lord and Savior. Each day that goes by, you know, each day more prophecy, you know, pops off like popcorn. We're getting closer and closer to the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Mashiach. You know what I'm saying? He gonna come deliver the elect and I pray in part of our number. I pray you, brother, I pray you brothers listening and if you sisters are part of our number, we get beaten up to them cherish, change, you know what I'm saying? And be able to, you know, witness the downfall of these heathens, man, you know, and the building of the kingdom of heaven. It's gonna be amazing, man. So, uh, Joel 3 and 9, proclaim this among Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. Meaning what? They're getting their weapons ready, man. Their grenades, their rockets, their nuclear arsenal, everything. Their, their guns, you know, their tanks. They're getting everything ready for World War Three. You see, that's why you got King jong Un. You know, he's over there um, testing his nuclear missiles, man. His nuclear arsenal. They testing it out. And you know, Russia doing the same thing. You know, Iran got nuclear arsenal now, but they're trying to keep it on a hush-hush. But they got it, man. You see? Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, O ye heathen, and gather yourselves together around the bow. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So he's the one that's causing them to come down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, the valley of Jehoshaphat, over there in the land in the Middle East. You know, he gonna judge them, man. That's what Yahweh Shapat means. You know, so it says, Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. He's in full control, man. You see, I understand this, right? He controlling the minds of these heathen nations to prepare for war. Because we're in the time of war, pursuant to Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, there's a time and a place for everything under the heaven, you know, under heaven, man. And what, what, what time we in right now? A time of war, you know, not of peace, you see? So verse 12, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shepot, which means the, the, the Most High's judgment, Right? For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And any jakes that's inside these, you know, these militaries and stuff like that, when they get when they get called and drafted over there to the Middle East to fight in this World War Three, in his world's on war, you know, the Lord gonna judge him over there, man. Cause when Yahweh shall make a second coming, you know, they all gonna stop fighting against each other and try to fight against our Lord. And the scriptures say it'd be nothing to perceive but but dust and the smell of smoke, man. You know, so a lot of jakes gonna get vaporized over there and heathens as well. Verse 13, put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down for the price press is full. The fats overflow for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes, a lot, man, a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? In the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. You know, 
two. This is around the corner. Let's get this. Second area 16 and verse uh what I wanted. Let's get verse 12. Right? The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand. Who's his right hand? Yahweh shot. That beneath the bow, his arrows going to the nuclear missiles that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. You miss when getting shot from everywhere, man. You know, and you got to understand how the Lord is in full control. See, ultimately, these are his nuclear missiles. You know, everything that goes on, this is all Yahweh Bashim Yahushua's movie. He's in full control. To the missiles getting shot are his, man. His arrows. You know what I'm saying? Right? They, um, that he shoot off our sharp, and they're not going to miss. They're going to hit their designated targets. Right? Verse 14 Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumes the foundation of the earth, man. So that fire, that brimstone is coming, and plagues is coming, pestilence is coming. You know, all hell going to break loose, man, very, very soon. Right? Verse 16 Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Verse 17, woe is me, woe is me who delivered me in those days. And I just remind me of the scripture um, when it says the righteous shall scarcely be saved, roughly paraphrasing it. Um, Ezra was seeing a vision. The Lord gave him a vision, you know, through the angel Uriel, who showed him a lot of things, you know. And Ezra said, woe is me, woe is me who will deliver me in those days. Meaning, you know, he's going to be, he's, he's going to be there. He's going to be there during these times. Meaning re, that, that proves regeneration, reincarnation. And Edris is saying, who's going to deliver me? That going to the righteous, scarcely being saved, man. Because the elect going to, you know, see the mystery getting shot off and everything like that. Those that are still on the earth. Because between the first Thessalonians and the fourth chapter, you're going to have, you know, um, those that be modest, that die in Yahweh's shot, but they're going to get raised up first. Then you got those that, 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 that are alive and remain, they're going to get caught up together with them in the clouds. You know, and, and when they're getting caught up together in the clouds, that's them getting scarcely, that's them scarcely being saved. Because they're going to be seeing the missiles, man. Brothers may see the missiles right before it hit, and they get beamed up, man, you know? So that's going to be like a, you know, um, um, the scripture say what? The remnant were fighting and gave glory to y'all, watching y'all shot. You know, our flesh is going to have, we're going to be nervous. Lower and part of the number of the elect getting beamed up. We're going to get nervous, man, you know? But we're going to give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to y'all, watching y'all shot. Right? Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, what shall I do when this evil shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation, and anguish are sin as scourges for amendment. Right? So all these things are coming on the earth, man. Let's end it off with this one. Uh Revelation 11. Right? Revelation 11, and let's give verse. What do I want? Let's see, let's see. All this is good, man. Let's start at verse 13. And in the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and we know FEMA divided America into ten parts. And the in, in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. Seven is what? Completion. So a lot of people. Right? And the remnant were affrighted, the elect, and gave glory to the power of heaven. Right? The remnant were affrighted, man. The right shall scarce be saved. The point I want is this right here. Verse 14. The second woe is past. World war two is past. And behold, the third woe, World War Three, cometh quickly. So this is coming very, very soon. You see, let's get one more precept. Second Peter chapter three and verse 10. And it reads, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That fire is coming, man. You know, that fire and brimstone in the form of missiles, right? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works are therein shall be burned up. See, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You know, all of this is coming very soon, man. I fire and I brimstone, but the Lord will protect his elect, guide and deliver his elect. So let's end it off with that one in Psalms. Because, you know, World 3 is around the corner, but the Lord said this psalm 91 and let's get verse 7 right let's start of verse 5 matter of fact verse 1 man this whole chapter is is beautiful psalm 91 verse 1 he that dwelleth in his secret place of the most high 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place of this truth, this ministry, this gospel, the shadow of the Almighty's protection by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. He's going to have them angels, you know what I'm saying, guiding and delivering brothers and sisters, you know. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge my in my fortress, my power in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Though, I'm sorry, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, the missiles, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. It's not going to come nigh unto the elect, the hopeful elect. You know, the brothers out there, some of the elders and apostles on down, out there being digi dig um, uh, diligent, Slakia, out there being diligent in his work and his truth. And if we endure until the light end, you know, the Lord said a thousand are going to fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand. You know, we got to continue doing his work, man. You see? So it so says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague. And the ultimate plague is of nuclear missiles. You know, World War III. You know, the ultimate plague is of nuclear um, missiles getting shot up into the world, man. You know? Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over to keep thee in all thy ways. So, all of this is about to come on the earth. You know what I'm saying? This right here is, is nothing compared to what's coming. You know, this just, you know, this made it, you know, kick it off a little bit. But it's going to get bad, man. It's going to get horrible out here. Um, we got to remain on our watch. Continue, you know, um, measuring down the time, diligent in itself. So I pray it was edified through the spirit of Pavi Haobashim Yahu Shai. Double honor to the elders and apostles, great millstone. Koh Halayim Lai Haobashim Yahu Shai. Bashim Achak Wadash. Right? Pray it was edified through the spirit of Pavi Haobashim Yahu Shai. Right? Peace, salutation, and elects gathered abroad, pushing the truth of sincerity. Without a message, Shalom. Abad Babal. May Yahu Bashim Yahu Shai destroy America, Babylon the Great. Right, and establish a righteous world on this earth. Right, without a message, Shalom.